Okay, the new radios that we're seeing in some of the behind the scenes footage, especially when uh, uh, Winston's uh, doing something in one of the behind the scenes videos that's out there, it's got a new radio, and that radio is is the Bofeng VR5 something or other. Do you know what? I've used these radios in Airsoft. They're really big uh, in that kind of arena because they're really cheap and they're quite powerful, so you can get a good distance. Some of these more amateur kind of radios in Airsoft, they're, they're generally not very good, especially if you're underground. A lot of the Airsoft sites I go to, they're, they're in the middle of a city, so they're in prisons and stuff like that. They don't work too well, so some people use the bow things because they're quite powerful and you can get a good distance out of them so teams can talk to each other that kind of stuff and i want you know in that arena i haven't really looked into the legalities of using these radios and it wasn't until now with the ghostbusters stuff coming out that i've started looking into it because i've got some events coming up and it'd be really nice to have radios at the events where i can talk to people and, and get stuff arranged communicate all that kind of stuff uh, but they're going to be in areas that are built up, potentially have things like security firms around the area. And these radios are ham radios, so they're they're used by businesses and they're used, some of the frequencies are used by security and police, that kind of stuff. And, and without going into all of the, and I've done some research this morning, trust me, without going into depth of, of, of despair when it comes to using these radios, legally you can't use them. Unless you have a license. So unless you want to fork out some extra money. I mean, these radios are relatively cheap anyway. You can get the, the both things. The ones that we've seen uh, uh, Winston use or have on his belt. Uh, for about 20 quid. Let me just pop you up there a little bit better. About 20 quid, 25 quid, something like that. So they are really, really cheap. And a, like I say, a really good viable option. If, let me tighten that up. If you are looking to get a radio to have on your belt. And an option is to have them without a battery in, turn them off, whatever, you just, just sit on your belt and you've got the accessory. When you, when you compare it to, to the original uh, Ghostbuster radios, you know, price-wise, even for a 3D printed, uh, you know, Motorola, was it 550? Uh, you know, you, you, your pennies compared to that kind of stuff. So you're talking, you know, 20 quid, is nothing to have this thing on your belt. And it's a real radio. It's going to look good. It's going to look pretty spanking good. Uh, but you've got to be really careful. If you want to use these things. I'm looking at it today. I'm going to leave a link. Uh, this is obviously for UK uh, people. I, I don't know the legalities in the US. I know there are legal implications in the US as well. Other places, uh, European, I don't know. Uh, whatever. But this is mainly for the UK guys. So you groups out there looking to get a set of these things. So you can have... At events and stuff like that you have to be really careful there's a link in the description to uh essex ham which is uh a place that has, has answered the question can i use a bowfane handheld uh, without a license and legally no there's a few caveats to that so you can you can use them as amateur radios if you if you reprogram to to certain frequencies and pay to do a course, uh, there's an online, I think, li the license itself is free, but you have to pay twenty-seven fifty for uh, to do a to, to do a sit a little exam. And I, I'm assuming that's per person. Uh, if you want to use them for business use, so your business license, which might actually be a cheaper option if you've got a, a larger group, uh, so you can get one license for a company or business individual sole traders or group or charity so you could have that one license it lasts for five years so 75 pound is is an option to you and you can apply online for that uh, you can set these and this is what i was looking into to the the, the pmr frequencies which is the 446 megahertz frequencies in the uk is what i know most uh, of of the because these things they come with frequencies always set on them but they're frequencies that they've used in because they come from china uh to china to, to test them so they test the frequencies and stuff like that some of those frequencies that are programmed in them when you get them potentially could be frequencies that the police use 
local ambulance service, all that kind of stuff. So you have to be really, really careful. And if you go to events, there might be security firms on, on similar frequencies. So you can you can opt to program them to the PMR frequencies, uh, but technically you, you still can't use them legally. There's a, there's a whole bombshell. You know, most of the people I know in Airsoft set these to the PMR frequencies and uh, just use them and have never never got in trouble. I don't know how it's going to be affected by all the Ghostbusters out there that are going to be getting these radios, potentially reprogramming them and just using them without a license. Uh, the, the, the legal implications, I'm not sure. I don't know or haven't ever heard of, and a lot of people are saying that they've never heard of anyone actually getting into any trouble using the PMR frequencies. Uh, but, but I, I mean, I certainly want to be legal. I've got two of these things coming because I've got a big event coming up soon and I want to be able to communicate with at least one other person in, in, in the Portsmouth Ghostbusters to, to keep things keep things rolling. So I'm going to be mobile and I'm going to have someone on like the stalls and stuff like that. So I'll be able to keep in contact with them, make sure everyone's taking breaks, all that kind of stuff. I just need to do this legally. So I might have to fork out a couple of quid to either do this on the amateur frequencies uh, which I may have to get another person done as well or buy a business license which costs £75 for five years which may be because then anyone in Portsmouth Ghostbusters if they're part of my group can use these radios the problem I'm going to have is if people turn up to my events from other groups and they have these radios and start using random frequencies and and potentially be in my event, potentially could get me in trouble because I'm the event organiser. So, uh, you know, the this this the, the new radios for Ghostbusters are going to start causing a lot of trouble. You need to be really careful is what I'm saying. Uh, got any questions about this, please leave them in the comments down below. I've got a friend who has a licence to use these and is working with these radios. And he's pumping me full of information that, to be honest, initially I was like, what the, what the hell are you talking about, man? Uh, but I now get it. Greg, thank you, buddy. Uh, for giving me the the impetus to go and actually research this because it is a minefield of information out there. This website, essexham.co.uk, have got a really good set out, you know, question and answer kind of, kind of set up. Uh, which will give you all the information you need to know. So please read from the link below. If you're looking at getting these radios, especially if your group of busters are getting these radios to use them, uh, potentially at your events and stuff like that, please, please, please read the information below. Uh, get you get yourself understanding where you are legally using these. And if you, and if you choose to use the PMR frequencies uh, on these radios without licensing and stuff like that you need to understand the implications and the possible uh repercussions of that so just be careful people link in the description <sighs> let me know if you've got any questions chill out ghostbusters oh my my uh, uh group on facebook look for ports of ghostbusters on facebook look out for my upcoming events i'm actually doing an event at the odeon for the release Still not sure exactly when the release is. Is it the 29th? Is it the 22nd? No one actually really knows. On the website, Odeon is saying it's the 22nd in the UK. Uh, but other people elsewhere are still saying it's the 29th internationally, other than, than in the US. So I, I still don't know. So, But there will be an event on the Friday and Saturday, depending on which way, weekend it is, uh, for the upcoming release of Frozen Empire. I can't wait. Those that come to my event and because we're going to be fundraising for Mind uh, will get a free showing of the film. Uh, we are set to get a free ticket each for those that come to the event. If you're interested in, in your UK based Ghostbuster, South of England or you can't want to come from further, that'd be amazing. And you want to get a free viewing of the film, come and help fundraise with us. Uh, we do a lot of charity work uh, in the South Coast. We are just outside of Portsmouth. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. Uh, I will see you guys and girls on another video really soon. Hopefully I've got some more stuff coming out with a new film coming out and with my event coming up, I'm looking to post lots more Ghostbusters content. Uh, I might even do a breakdown of the recent trailer. I don't know. We'll see. Cheers, guys and girls. See you soon.